Yes, but we can get twice that price from Germany. The hearts and kidneys bring a premium. No, that's your last shipment to Tijuana at the old prices. That's right, doctor. Look, I I've got to go. Call me back within the hour if you change your mind. Adios. Someday when your family is happily reunited, I'm sure that you'll feel complete. Your beautiful wife, you might say, will be our guest until then. Of course, Universal Cryogenics is here to support all of your family needs. I appreciate your understanding and concern, Doctor. Besides being a wonderful wife, Eileen was always a very special friend to me. A wonderful lady with a big heart. She wanted the whole family preserved in frozen suspension. She surely believed in life extension. Yes, uh, actually by now your wife is being introduced to temperatures of minus 320 degrees Fahrenheit. Of course, we hope that she can return to us in perfect health. I have total confidence that the technology of the future can make that possible. A newly discovered cryogenic freezing fluid, green in color, when injected into the body, helps to preserve the cells and organs indefinitely. However, the fluid is highly conductive to energy sources, so we have to be careful to insulate all of the patients. Again, I'd like to reassure you, Mr. Davenport, that you made a wise decision in universal cryogenics. Thank you, Doctor. Come again. Oh, 
My assistant, Mary Hampton, will show you around the facilities. If there's anything that I could do for you or anything you'd like to talk about, please call me. Thank you for your consideration. We got to talk. About what? About money, Jerry. You mean that the... I mean if we split the Mexican deal, that's $77,000 apiece, right? But what about Mary? What about Mary? If she finds out, she'll report us. Mary's not going to say anything to anyone, do you understand? Hi. Mm -hmm. What's this about a bank job? What's what about a bank job? Well, I just heard Tony saying that... Hey, Tony's a friggin' idiot! Will you listen to idiots now? No, I just don't think that it's a very... No, you don't think, do you? It's bullshit. Ain't you no know, bank job or any other type of job going down. Just shut the hell up, all right? What's the matter with you? I'm gonna get something from you now, besides all the bullshit you've been giving me, huh? <laughs> Go near her again. She's mine. M I N E. Got it? Yeah, well, you don't own her. There's nothing she's done for you that she hasn't done for me. Or anyone else. Hey, you coming? Hey, it's loaded. We're out of here. Stop at the cashier's office. For what, Joe? Hey, we got a pair of motel bill, right? Yes, yes, please! Oh, 
Hold it, buddy. Ah. Who's next? Anybody else want to play Rambo? You can treat everybody. Ooh, nice mask. Even better. Now, come on! No, please don't hurt me. Oh, honey, you're much, much, much too pretty to die. Now shut up and do exactly as I say! Come on, let's go, come on! Okay, you bastards, free! Let's rush this one to ICU. Here's the file that you asked for. I also need the file on the U.S. Gas and Oil Corp, please. Yes, sir. Yes, can you hold, please? Excuse me, Mr. Davenport, you have an emergency call on line one. Joseph Davenport. Yes. Oh. N no, I... Yes. Yes, Kansas City General. I thank you for notifying me, Dr. Nevin. Goodbye. Dr. Nevin. Your name, sir? Uh, Joseph Davenport. Let me page him for you, sir. Thank you. Dr. Nevin, so I see you. Sir? Yes. Uh, I'm Dr. Nevin. Uh, I spoke to you earlier on the phone. Uh, yes, I'm Joe's father, Joseph Davenport. Well, uh, Mr. Davenport, um, I have no encouraging news at this point. Uh, he's in a coma. He's lost a great deal of blood. I'm afraid, I'm afraid the bullet wounds are critical. His condition is deteriorating rapidly. I'm very sorry. The only suggestion I can have is putting him on life support system. But uh, please think it over. Actually, the choice has been made, Dr. Nevin. Joe's mother's in cryogenic frozen suspension. I want the same procedure for Joe. His mother would want that. Oh, I see. 
Mr. Davenport, uh, we will leave your son on life support system, but I feel that cryogenic suspension truly goes against the laws of nature. This, this frozen suspension that you speak of makes no sense to me, and I've never heard of any scientific facts that suggest its possibility. It's what I believe is best for my family. Joe's my only son. I, I understand. I'll have to ask you to sign some release papers. Please wait here and I'll be right back. <clears throat> Universal Cryogenics? Who's calling? Joseph Davenport. Dr. Miller? Yes, Dr. Miller. This is Joseph Davenport. Uh, you may remember me. Oh, yes, Mr. Davenport. Uh, what can I do for you? I need to arrange a frozen cryogenic suspension for my son. He's been shot. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. I'll have my assistant, Mary Hampton, meet you with the necessary paperwork to release your son. Time is of the essence. Uh, what's your location? Kansas City Memorial, room 424. All right, thank you. I I'm sorry to hear about your son, uh, but again, I'm glad that you chose universal cryogenics. Goodbye, Mr. Davenport. Miss Hampton. Dr. Miller told me on the phone you were coming over. Thank you. It's quite all right, but please call me Mary. I'm very sorry about your son. He will be kept on life supports until he's received at the cryo lab. Everything's been taken care of. I've arranged for the helicopter to pick him up. Mary, I can't believe this is happening again to me. Well, maybe this is a good time for us to get a cup of coffee. We could talk about other things. I don't want to burden you with all my trouble. Mr. Davenport, I'm here to help. Please call me Joseph, all right? All right, Joseph. How about that cup of coffee? I've read that Davenport Industries has helped many underprivileged children. You must be very proud. Yes, I am very proud of my company. But sometimes I... No, please go on. I'm really very interested. Sometimes I feel I've been married to my work. Especially during the years Joe began to have problems. What kind of problems? Ever since Joe turned 16, he's been in and out of trouble. Just got worse and worse. Robberies, assaults. I had to get him out of the house, especially after the doctors told me Eileen was terminal. I had to make certain choices. That must have been very difficult for you. You seem so understanding, Mary, and happy. Well, thank you. My friends think that, too. What do you mean, think that, too? Well, things aren't always what they may seem. Mary, it's none of my business, but are you having problems at home? Well... It doesn't work for me. It's always something, is it? I can't live with a drunk! What can you live with?! It looks like we need each other's support. I feel very concerned for you. I thought of calling you many times. I just didn't think it was right.
The wounds are no problem. No, the organs have not been damaged. It's a young, healthy specimen. Well, that's just fine then. We have lots of buyers just waiting for some young hearts and kidneys. Are you still interested in the pituitary gland? What about the cerebellum? I see. Well, I'm glad that we could agree on something. Yes, that'll be on Mexicali Air Freight tonight. Thank you, senor. Goodbye. Cheap son of a bitch. Jerry? Jerry, where are you? I need your help. Oh, Jerry! Idiot. Hi, Wanda, baby. looking for us. Don't worry, baby, he's not. He thinks I'm working in the cryo lab. Let's go over here. Dr. Miller. What the hell have you been doing, Jerry? Look at me when I'm talking to you. Well, I don't want you dipping your pen in company ink. I need you available for our special projects. Now, a chopper came in this afternoon with a specimen on it, and I couldn't find you. I'm sorry, Doctor. I... Shut up. I want you to get a workroom ready. Is that clear? Yes, it's clear. I'll get to it next. The project will have first priority. This one has minor complications. Bullet holes. Now, you know what to do with bullet holes, don't you, Jerry? Jerry, he knows. He's a sleazeball, Wanda. Don't worry about him. Yes, Mr. Davenport, the procedure has been completed and went smoothly. I assume that Mary was a big help to you. Yeah, 4.30 would be fine. All right, see you then, Mr. Davenport. Afternoon, sir. Dr. Miller's expecting you. Mr. Davenport, sit down. Dr. Miller, it's good to see you again. Mary, why don't you join us? Mr. Davenport, I can assure you that your son is in the best of hands and that someday when your family is reunited, you will realize what a brave decision you made. I certainly hope so, Doctor. As with your wife, your son will be kept on a 
life support system until liquid nitrogen lowers his body temperature to minus 320 degrees Fahrenheit. Of course, I can't imagine how difficult it must be to lose a son in such a tragic way. Well, I wasn't totally surprised, Doctor. Yeah. Joe's adolescence was very turbulent, to say the least. When he returned from Vietnam injured, the situation worsened. Well, he was very mentally disturbed. He was involved in a lot of crime and really was no longer a son to me, but a stranger. Actually, Doctor, I have a special request to make it possible. I would like to visit the container where my wife is kept. And I would like to see my son's container, if I may. If it's an inconvenience. Oh, well, well of course. <laughs> uh, however, I must warn you that the bodies are wrapped in cryogenic foil and you will not actually be able to see your wife and son. I understand that. I would just like to spend a few moments with them. Yes. Well, of course. Well, shall we go? The container must be kept at a constant minus 320 degrees Fahrenheit. And for that reason, it can't be open for more than five minutes. <laughs> Or we may risk brain cell and organ damage. Five minutes is more than enough, Doctor. Yes. Here we are, Mr. Davenport. Your son's nameplate will be placed in the front sometime tomorrow. Doctor, I didn't want to mention it in front of Mr. Davenport, but I'm sure that's not his son's container. Yes, it is, Mary. I double-checked. Excuse me, Doctor. A fire victim was placed in there yesterday. I remember. That's not Mr. Davenport's son. He was put in 454. You must be mistaken, Mary. Thank you, Doctor. I feel that Joe is finally at rest with his mother. Mary, I need to call for my car. Is there a phone I can use? Certainly, right here. You know, I wonder if I'm doing the right thing. You're doing what you feel is best for your family. Sometimes it feels they'll just be frozen in those capsules forever. I understand. Is there anything else I can do for you right now? No. Well, you know how to reach me. Hey, Mary. How's my favorite girl this Halloween Eve? Oh, I'm fine. How come I never see you anymore? Well, they got me working swing shift and I don't like it so much. But they got me a new partner, some young kid named Mark. And I still got Luke to keep me company. You and that dog. So tell me, my lady, what's the costume going to be tonight? Oh, well, I was thinking about being a security guard. That sounds good to me. I'd just like to get into this uniform. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't mind going trick-or-treating with you as Freddy. Who's Freddy? Freddy Krueger, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, I know who you mean. Well, that's one scary guy. Yeah, he sure is. Do me a big favor going home tonight, Mary. Drive real careful. They got a big storm coming in. It's going to be real wet out there. I will. We might have a few little disappointed trick-or-treaters this year, too. I hope not. Good night, Vince. Night, sugar. I hate drinking this frickin' coffee all by myself.
decide to work late tonight? Oh, well, my car won't start again. My boyfriend keeps saying he's gotten it fixed. Why don't you let me give you a ride home? You wouldn't mind? I'd be delighted. Fill up to split in some pizza? Well, that sounds great. It might just be the best thing for me. There's my car. Tonight goes a little bit faster than it did last night. And I think I'm about ready to clean your clock again. Oh, yeah? Well, yeah. you can try. You know, I'm usually pretty lucky on Halloween. Last year, I won tickets for the Chiefs and the Cowboys. Well, it sounds like a hell of a John Wayne movie to me. Yeah, well, it's my time, though. Take my hard-earned pay. Every Friday is the same damn thing. Sarge, I gotta quit playing with you. <laughs> you know what he says to me, Luke? He says Halloween brings him good luck. <laughs> you think you're a real hot dog with those side stripes, don't you? Turn that up, Bill. Yeah, okay. With expected showers. High winds will continue throughout the evening, adding to a possible wind chill factor well below zero. We strongly recommend parents to keep their trick-or-treaters indoors tonight to ensure a safe Halloween. Sorry, kids. Up next is Talk Line with scheduled guest Dr. Julian Kaplan from the Institute of Paranormal Studies in Cornell. Tonight, Dr. Kaplan will be discussing her book, Life After Death. Let's change that to On Kansas City's best AM station, now. <laughs> One more hand. No, no, I fold. Jeez, you know, so far I've lost every hand tonight. You make my heart feel good, Mark. <laughs> Why wouldn't you know if that weather would just turn to crap on Halloween? <laughs> Gonna be a lot of pissed off little kids, that's for damn sure. Holy shit. Lightning must have fried the main power panel. Luke, quiet, no. The auxiliary should kick on. Oh, I'll be damned, Sarge, you're right. Hey, we're in business again. What I lied to you after I'm taking all your money? Now what? Oh, shit. Lightning fried the auxiliary power unit. God damn it. What do we do now, Sarge? <sighs> Quit driving me crazy, will you? I'm looking for answers, not questions. What we do is we check the main computer, always after a total power out. Did you understand that? Oh, yeah. Hey, good idea, Einstein. What a piece of work you are. I don't know a damn thing about this, but we're looking for 454. You see it? Yeah, 454. There it is. All right, hit it. Oh, shit, all that does is run the battery-powered exit lights. I'm gonna have to call the goddamn power company. What a mess, huh? Yeah, hello. Yeah, this is the Universal Cryogenics Lab over at 2010 South 2nd Street. Yeah, listen, we need to get somebody out here to restore power immediately. Yeah, I'm real sorry that you're getting a lot of calls, but this is an emergency. I'm talking about human bodies, pal. Do you understand that? Yeah, now. Yeah, thank you. All right, again, it's top priority. What I want you to do is I want you to go outside, take this, and see if you can get the auxiliary power going on. Just hit the switch on the breaker box. I don't know anything about it. Just go do it. Try it, will you? Yeah, okay. 
I gotta call Miller. Yeah, Dr. Miller, this is Vince over at the Cryogenics Lab. Listen, as soon as you get this message, I think it'd be a good idea if you got over here immediately. Thank you. Sarge? Yeah. No way, man. It's hopeless. The lightning hit the auxiliary generator directly. It's cooked. Well, we're going to have to move those containers outside. Our jobs are at stake. We've got to look like we're doing something. Inside what, Sarge? Listen, man, can you think of a cooler spot than outside? Why are you such a pain? Yeah. Let's go. Son of a bitch is still out over the town, probably. Well, uh, hey, I could take my car and maybe get some help somewhere. No, you can't take your car and get some help somewhere, because it's too late. The power company will be here any minute. I sure hope so. Anyway, I'm going to need you to help me bring these containers back in. Well, let's go over to Miller's office and take a break. Well, pal, how you like your job so far? Well, I'll tell you the truth, Vince. This place gives me the creeps. Come on, Mark. You're not as scared, are you? No way I'd walk through this warehouse of crying noise. This place gives me the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> crying noise. Why didn't I get a normal job? One that pays good, with normal hours. I mean, this job sucks. We're both in the same boat, cowboy. I don't know what I'll do either, though. Somehow or another, we get a little respect with these uniforms on. Where, where the hell's the power company? And this place is like a nightmare. <laughs> Those frozen TV dinners are starting to get to you out there, aren't they? Hell no. Just a bunch of frozen stiffs, huh? 
Yeah. Sure they are. We'll listen to it come down out there. Bet it rains all night like this. It sounds like bacon frying. Well, I'll tell you, if that power company doesn't get here pretty quick, this boy's going on strike. You got that right, Sarge. like to bail out of this toilet job well you know what they say mark life is a bitch and then you die hey what was that see it's getting to you already isn't it son no i i thought there was a... why don't you do me a favor why don't you go out there and check and see what it is and i'll stay here and wait for the power company all right Probably just some trick-or-treaters anyway. Mm, must have been a branch falling. Yeah, that's probably what it was. It was a branch. Why don't you do me a favor? Take a little shot of courage. It might warm you up. Yeah, thanks. Mm. Here's to you and me and the holidays. Happy Halloween. Check and see what's wrong with him. You did. Well, anyway, it looks like Luke got tired of us and went out trick or treating. What in the hell is this? 
There's something mighty strange is going on here, Mark. What in God's name happened to Luke? Something very strange? Poor Luke. No more Halloween games for this cowboy. Screw this penny ante job. I'm, I'm going home. I'm, I'm going to have a cold beer and then... What the hell? Stop it! You're making me sick! Dream. We gotta stay together. We got no more goddamn bullets. Get back, Mark! It was great. Thanks for inviting. <sighs> Thank you so much for the ride home. Well, what's the story this time, Nate? Some people have to work for a living. I'm not stupid, you know. Who's this? Don't tell me. Your long lost uncle or something. Steve, please. Well, come on in. Don't be shy. I'm sorry. I apologize. Shit, apologize. For what? Happens to be a client, Steve. Client? Give me a little credit, why don't you? You know what's going on here. Hello? Vince? What? Oh my god. No, don't go anywhere or do anything except call the doctor. No, I will. Uh, Vince? Oh my god. The line went dead. I've got to get back to the lab. Do you think you could give me a Don't ride? Don't worry about it, sugar daddy. I'll give her a ride there. We got some talking to do. 
You're too drunk to drive a tricycle. And furthermore, I want you out of here when I get back. Off. Where was Vince when he phoned? I don't know. Let's find him.
first get is gonna get his my girlfriend leaves me on Halloween bitch her so called clients trying to get the trick and the treat when I get to the cryonic lab I'm gonna give that bastard a real good seeing too I've had about enough of you. Steve! What? these in research of some sort? Not to know of. Oh my god. Something happened this morning that I didn't want to tell you. Just tell me. Remember when we were looking at your son's container? Well, it wasn't the right one. And when I told Dr. Miller, he got really angry at me and I didn't understand. And I realized he was hiding something. What? What's going on? These aren't animal organs. You lost me, Mary. What are you talking about? They're human organs. Well, I see you've decided to spend Halloween with us tonight. Welcome. Dr. Miller, what's going on here? Profit, Mary. Profit. Healthy, capitalistic profit. Mr. Davenport is a champion of it. Aren't you, Mr. Davenport? Do I frighten you? Ah! Ah! Are there any windows? No! 
baby. Get the car. You get behind those pallets right now. Hurry up. I'll stay with Mary. Hurry! Tell me what's going on there before I rip your goddamn head off. All right, I'll tell you. It's not me. Miller made me... Miller made you do what? He made me remove organs to sell them. You bastard! What brought these goddamn things to life? The fluid... What fluid? The green cryogenic fluid. It's highly conductive when it's injected. So what? The lightning. What about the lightning? Hang on, clown. What about the lightning? The fluid must have attracted the lightning. All right, you crude ball. I know I took those containers outside to keep them cool. The next thing I know, there's crinoids and zombies all over the goddamn place. Axes, nothing would stop them. They were all burnt. Now, I know fire's not going to stop them. Get out of here. Every one of them is charred up like they've been electrocuted or something. I want to know how to kill them. That's what I want to know. All I know is you gotta reverse the process, somehow refreeze them. That wouldn't work, would it? It's all I can think of. As long as they stay warm, they're alive. You gotta believe me. So that's why they ate my partner? You know, you remind me of a ward I had on my hand one time. And the doctor burned it off with liquid nitrogen. Nitrogen would work. I think it's possible. It's the only chance we've got now. Come on, we gotta find Mary. All right, we'll find Mary. We gotta find that liquid nitrogen. Come on.
hell are you, man? Mary's boyfriend. Where is she? I don't know. Last I saw she was with Dr. Miller and some other guy. And it's creature attacks. No, no, zombies. They're frozen humans that came back from the dead. We gotta get out of here. Follow me.
my son. It's not your son. No. It's my it's son. It's not your son. He's dead. Joseph, please. Son, it's me, your father. Son.
hell's going on here? It's safe in the car. I'll be right back. I'll meet you at the main police station, Sergeant. I'll explain the unexplainable there. Mr. Davenport, please, go on downtown. I'll be leaving here shortly. station, please. Market in 32nd Street. 